Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you for being here today. Uh, 60 and Me is a community of women over 60 and we are aging beautifully and living longer and enjoying our lives. And one of the key priorities here is to give perspective on some of the challenges that we face as we get a little older. Now, longevity is a blessing and a curse. Um, it's wonderful to have a longer life, to be able to enjoy this beautiful planet that we're on and to be able to contribute and just enjoy living. But at the same time, we do lose people who we love, people who are very close to us. And that transition, that dealing with that loss is sometimes very, very painful and it takes time. And I know a lot of the women in our community have lost partners and friends, um, you know, grandchildren and children. And it's just an incredibly complicated and difficult thing to talk about. But Jane uh, Duncan Rogers is one of our bloggers and she wrote a really wonderful article about how to remember the people who we have lost. And she gives 13 ideas. And I suggest that you read her article. She has been through loss herself. She was um, inspired really to write some books and offer workshops on um, after her husband's death. And I think that she offers some very uplifting and beautiful ideas. It, you know, it's gonna take time to get over loss and the pain can sometimes be absolutely, you know, overwhelming, but that dull ache is the beginning of the healing process. And so I hope this is useful. I hope that you find some jewels here that perhaps you can incorporate into your life as you're trying to deal with the, the loss of a loved one. 13 beautiful ideas to give them, keep them alive in your heart. Well, the first thing is, and this is gonna sound like a funny one because I don't cook, but to cook their, cook their favorite dishes. You know, celebrate the things that they love to cook, the things that you share together as a family. And somehow that sensory experience of cooking, preparing something that they loved or that they prepared is just wonderful. I remember my mom always used to make um, sausage rolls at Christmas. And to this day, I still make sausage rolls at Christmas. And if you're not in the uh, UK, you probably don't know what a sausage roll is, but it's, you know, it's a special Christmas dish. And so I used to, oh, I always make that at the holidays and it brings her back into our family and allows to continue a tradition. The second is to write a letter or record a video to them. You know, sometimes one of the most challenging things when you lose someone is that you don't have the opportunity to keep talking to them and to sharing with, share with them what you're doing and what you're going through. And there's nothing strange or odd about doing this, you know, writing a letter um, to strengthen your connection with that person. I remember when my mom died for years, I would always um, dream of telephone calls. And, you know, we all have our ways of dealing with these things. But I remember in a way it was very scary, but at the same time, it was lovely to be able to talk with her. And I think that's that there is that need to continue the conversation. Um, another thing which may sound a little bit strange is to create something beautiful with the body. And of course, a lot of people now are being cremated and the ashes are being you know, held in kind of a reverence as, as it should be. But one thing that you might consider is a bio urn. And this is something that I've actually got in my will that I'd like to do, which is to have my ashes uh, grow a tree. You know, be put into an urn that is going to turn into a beautiful magnolia or a cherry blossom or one of my one of my favorite trees. And, you know, just have it as in a place where people can come and visit or maybe somewhere that, that they love to go, a walk somewhere near in the woods and, you know, somewhere that where you can plant it and let them have their special space. The fourth is to pray for them. Now, Praying is, of course, you know, a very personal thing, but I think that you still need to feel that they're there present in your life and pray for for them. It's a, it's a short one. It's number four. <laughs> I think it's powerful. Um, another one is um, what's well, related to writing a letter or recording a video, and that is to talk to them. I've actually discovered that when I'm feeling a little bit low myself, just walking around talking to myself actually helps. You know, you can hear the voice, you can hear the emotion, and it somehow grounds you and helps you to feel good. Ask them questions. You know, you've got to make a decision about something. Just say, okay, here's the deal. This is what the options are. This is what the situation is. What would you do? <laughs> Give me some advice here and hear their voices in your mind. Because if it's someone that you've loved deeply, you've had many conversations, you know, you know them really, really well. And so listen to their advice in your heart and in your mind and let that be a, a guidance for you. Uh, the next one is to keep a picture nearby. 
you know, pictures. I mean, maybe this is an obvious one that everybody will keep a picture of the people that they love and, 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 and look at it often and, and remember the situation or when it was taken or what you loved about that picture, you know, why it was so special. Another thing is to keep an heirloom with you, something that they loved, you know, something that they treasured, um, something uh, that, that was meaningful perhaps to both of you. It could be a wedding ring, it could be um, a piece of jewelry, it could be something, a rock that you picked up on the beach together. It could be anything that just is a, um, an emotive memory of, of your relationship with that person. It could be something they drew for you, something that they painted for you, something that they, they loved because that's what you're remembering is their love. Um, take them on a trip. If the person that you loved, who you've lost, always wanted to go somewhere, always wanted to go to Paris or always wanted to go to this specific place, go, just go by yourself and go with them in your heart and take them to that place and show them around. Say, you didn't get here, but this is what it's like and I want you to know how much you would have loved it or, you know, whatever. You, you've got, you know what that person wanted. You know what they were looking for in that bucket list place that they didn't quite make it to. Uh, and then take something of the significance to them. So with, the, with you that reminds you of them and just follow one of their dreams. Another thing is to keep them alive on social media. Now, this is a little bit of a controversial one because a lot of people don't like social media even now, and, and I understand that. But Facebook does have an option where you can assign um, uh, a legacy person who can actually uh, keep the site going. A lot of people still who I've lost on um, friends you know, from, from work have their Facebook pages still going. And on their birthdays, you get a little note and I don't know, it just sometimes makes me feel better to just send them a little note, you know, celebrating your birthday, remembering the time we did this. And um, as we get older, this happens more frequently. I, I know I've connected with our high school um, group on Facebook and almost every other week we lose someone. And I look at the high school picture and I remember the story and remember whether I remember, I was only in that particular high school for one year, so I don't have the same connection, but anyway, using social media to continue, keeping their social media to continue, is something to ask someone if they're dying and you're with them, do you want me to keep this going? It's a tough one <laughs> um, as to whether, what they would say, but it's, it's really, and, and in Jane's article, there's lots of links. And as I mentioned, she does do some workshops that you might find of interest. 11, watch their videos, read their letters. Well, I've got a lot of videos, I guess, there's lots of, but you know, for, for other people, if they've, they've written a video or recorded a video or written letters, read them. Maybe something that was in the will that was directed to you that you can hold close to your heart. Uh, let's see, go to memory rich places together. Sunsets, beaches, parks, walks with the dog, <laughs> um, camping places, second homes, little camping places you used to go to. Uh, theaters that you used to share together, bookstores, shopping, um, traveling, anything that you did together, just um, go to memory rich places. I know it's hard. And um, even I just even get emotional just even talking about it because there's so many people that I would love to be in those memory rich places with. But, um, and of course, finally, the 13th idea, which Jane puts forward is to, um, you know, put something in, in place to uh, continue their legacy. If you have, a, if they attended a school that they'd like to support some students in, you could set up a scholarship or a foundation or continue their good work. Just continue what they were doing if it was something that was important to you. Another thing is to um, a bench in a park where they could, where people can sit and remember that person and you can go and remember them. But I hope that's given you some thoughts, some ideas. Thank you, Jane, for writing this article. It's hard. It's a hard one to talk about, but I feel it wouldn't be right if we only talked about you know, divorce and makeup and beauty and travel and, and, you know, retirement and money, if we didn't actually occasionally talk about this. I just think it's important. So if you'd like to share, of course, don't leave too many personal details uh, here on the on the website and Facebook, but tell us your story. Um, do you remember, do you remember the people that you've lost? And how are you remembering them today? Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. If you feel like you need a little bit more support with this type of thing, please join or consider joining our 60 and Me supporters group on Patreon. We have a smaller group there that meets privately and we do live shows twice a week. We do um, exclusive videos 
and it's really the only place that I can suggest where you can make friends. Our community is just so big. The Patreon group is a nice, more private and exclusive group that you can consider. That's patreon.com slash 60 and me. If you love the video, please give us a like so we can share this with more people and subscribe, of course, if you would like to this channel. I would appreciate that. So take good care, everybody. Have a fabulous day wherever you are. Know that you are loved and take good care. Bye-bye for now.